add an exome mass evaluation, and a minimally invasive technique of contained extraction of large complex ovarian cysts. Objective to discuss the utility of ovarian malignancy biomarker panels and multimodal tests, and to review the key steps in contained removal of an adnexal mass to prevent spillage and minimize incision length. According to the ACS, in 2018, the U.S. will have approximately 22,000 new cases of ovarian cancer diagnosed and 14,000 ovarian cancer deaths. Ovarian cancer has a low survival rate largely because 4 out of 5 ovarian cancer patients are diagnosed with advanced disease. The main goal of diagnostic evaluation is to rule out malignancy. This is central to clinical management and surgical planning. A thorough evaluation with complete history, physical exam, imaging, and blood test is necessary. We may improve the mortality rates of those patients with an adnexal mass by having them appropriately triaged. Referral to gynecological oncology may at times be necessary. Next, I will discuss biomarker panels and multimodal tests that can be used to help in decision making. Adnexal mass evaluation. The three biomarker panels or multimodal tests I will discuss are the malignancy index assay, also known as OVA1, the risk of malignancy algorithm, also known as ROMA, and lastly, the risk of malignancy index, also known as the RMI. A key point to remember is that these tests are not to be used as a screening test, but instead should be used as a test to determine whether an ovarian mass that is already planned to be surgically removed is likely to be cancer. The biomarker panels are the malignancy index assay, brand named OVA1, and the risk of malignancy algorithm, named ROMA. OVA1 gained FDA approval in 2009, while ROMA gained approval in 2011. OVA1 analyzes five proteins, while ROMA analyzes two proteins. OVA1 has a proprietary OVACalc software, while ROMA has a publicly available calculation. If the OVA1 score is greater or equal to 5.0 for premenopausal patients, or greater or equal to 4.4 for postmenopausal patients, they are at high risk for malignancy. If the ROMA score is greater or equal to 1.31 for premenopausal patients, or greater or equal to 2.77 for postmenopausal patients, they are at high risk of malignancy. The multimodal test I will discuss is the risk of malignancy index. This index is largely used in the United Kingdom and is part of the National Institute for Health and Care Excellence, or NICE, guidelines. It is a multimodal test, meaning it incorporates CA125, menopausal status, and ultrasound findings. Similar to ROMA, it's non-proprietary and can be calculated with an app or website. This is calculated by assigning an ultrasound score, either a 1 or 3. If two or more ultrasound criteria are met, then U equals 3. If less than two ultrasound criteria are met, then U equals one. M equals one if the patient's premenopausal and three if the patient's postmenopausal. Lastly, the CA125 value is the actual value. We thus have the equation RMI is equal to U times M times CA125. If the RMI score is greater than 200, the patient should be referred to a specialist. We now will demonstrate a technique of safe contained extraction of a suspicious adnexal mass. We recommend the routine use of this technique even when biomicro panels are normal. Our patient is a 20-year-old G0 that had a large mass appreciated during her annual exam. CT imaging made a diagnosis of an approximately 12 by 12 by 16 centimeter complex septated vascular pelvic mass with an RMI of 36. The patient agreed to surgical removal, and this was completed in a minimally invasive fashion and placed within a large 17 centimeter bag in the routine manner. First, the incision site is extended to approximately 2 to 3 centimeters for our 17 centimeter bag. Then, traction is placed on the tether to pull out the ring. The ring is held taut towards the ceiling to serve as a shield to prevent any fluid from leaking into the incision site. 
Additionally, the abdomen is deceflated in order to avoid spraying or unexpected expulsion of fluids during decompression of the specimen. The mass is then gently punctured while the suction irrigator is used to decompress the cysts by suctioning cystic fluid. Alice clamps are often used for traction to tease tissue from the bag. There must be careful attention by the operators not to cut or puncture the bag. On occasion, fill the abdomen with gas to watch the progression of the extraction. Once more tissue is exposed, apply more Alice clamps for traction and to tease out more tissue. Grasping the bag firmly and swaying in a to and fro manner will allow the surgeon to determine if the incision size needs to be increased. At the end of the procedure, our patient maintained a 4 cm incision site. And always remember to interrogate the integrity of the bag by filling it with water. Biomarker panels and multimodal tests may aid in the proper triaging of patients with ovarian masses, and removing suspicious ovarian masses in a contained manner is essential to prevent spillage and seeding.